Hello, and welcome to the podcast for Standard of Benchmark 5.4, explaining Mendel's laws of heredity. In this podcast, we'll be looking at Gregor Mendel's contributions to the field of genetics. Before we get into the genetics, let's learn a little bit about Gregor Mendel and his contribution to the field of genetics. Gregor Mendel was an Austrian monk who lived in the 19th century. After becoming a priest, Mendel studied both mathematics and science at the University of Vienna. Along with teaching, he was also in charge of the garden at his monastery. Mendel's work in his garden would later become the basis for modern genetics. One of the plants Mendel grew in his garden were peas. And peas, like all plants, reproduce through pollination. In pollination, male sex cells fertilize a plant egg cell. When plants self-pollinate, male sex cells fertilize the egg cell in the very same plant. The seeds that are produced as a result of this fertilization inherit all of the characteristics from the single plant. It's like they have one parent. The pea plants that Mendel cared for were self-pollinating, sometimes called true breeding. This resulted in several different stocks of pea plants that Mendel was later able to study. Contrasting the idea of self-pollination is the idea of cross-pollination. In cross-pollination, male sex cells fertilize the eggs of another plant. The seeds produced inherit characteristics or traits from both plants. These offspring are called hybrids. Throughout this podcast and in our discussions about genetics, you're going to hear the word traits. A trait is a specific characteristic in an organism. Mendel followed seven traits in his pea plants. Seed shape, color, coat color, pod shape, pod color, flower position, and plant height. We'll talk more about traits in a little bit. Based on his observations, Mendel was able to make two conclusions. The first was that inheritance is determined by factors that are passed from one generation to the next. We call these factors genes. Each trait was controlled by one gene that occurred in two contrasting forms. These contrasting forms we call alleles. Mendel's second conclusion was that some alleles are dominant and some are recessive. An organism with a dominant allele for a particular form of a trait will always have that trait. An organism with a recessive allele for a particular form of a trait will have that form only when the dominant allele for that trait is not present. Let's use eye color as an example. In eye color, brown eyes are dominant and blue eyes are recessive. Having brown eyes is caused by an allele we're going to call capital B. So if capital B is present, then that person will always have brown eyes, regardless of whether there are two capital Bs or a capital and a lower case. A person with blue eyes will only have blue eyes if there are no dominant alleles present. Before we go too much further, let's talk about some vocabulary. Organisms that have two identical alleles for a trait are said to be homozygous. Two different alleles for the same trait make an organism heterozygous. 
When talking about an organism's physical characteristics, that means that there are things that you can, you can detect with the senses, we're talking about its phenotype. Its genetic makeup, whether it has a capital B or a lowercase b in the example of eye color, would be its genotype. Let's go back to our eye color example. Remember we said that brown eyes are dominant while blue eyes are recessive. If you have brown eyes, it's because you either have a homozygous pair of alleles or a heterozygous pair of alleles where the dominant brown eye trait is present. So as you can see from our example here, both of these are brown eyes, so they have the same phenotype, but because one is homozygous and the other is heterozygous, they have different genotypes. Same phenotype, different genotype. Determining what traits will be passed on is a matter of probability. Probability is the likelihood that an event will occur. And biologists use uh, probability along with a device called a Punnett square to determine what gene combinations might result from a genetic cross. A Punnett square is a shape that looks a little something like this. Now because biological organisms take a long time to grow, Punnett squares come in handy because they allow us to predict traits before or instead of actually growing them. Once again, let's go back to our brown eyes versus blue eyes. In this example, we're going to combine two heterozygous brown-eyed people. Now, heterozygous, remember, means that our genotype is a capital B, lowercase b. So both of our individuals have brown eyes and both have the exact same genotype. So same genotype, same phenotype. The result of this combination will be one homozygous offspring with brown eyes, two heterozygous offspring with brown eyes, and one homozygous offspring with blue eyes. probability is about chance. So this couple has a 75% chance of having a son or a daughter with brown eyes and a 25% chance of having a son or a daughter with blue eyes. So even though our happy couple here doesn't display the characteristics of blue eyes, there's still a possibility of having a son or a daughter with blue eyes. Now one of the other things that Mendel noticed as he was studying the pea plants was that all seven of the traits that we discussed earlier seem to sort themselves independently during the formation of what are called gametes, or sex cells. That means that pod color had no connection to plant height or seed shape. And what that means for organisms as a whole is that there are many, many different genetic variations possible. Just think of human beings, for example. Eye color, ear shape, whether a lobe is connected or disconnected, and hair color or hair, whether your hair is curly or straight or frizzy, none of those are connected, which means that there are lots of different possibilities for all of the organisms in the world. Wrapping up, let's take a look at Mendel's principles. First of all, inheritance of biological characteristics is determined by genes. Genes are passed from parents to offspring. Some forms of a gene may be dominant and others may be recessive. Each adult has two copies of each gene, one from each parent. These genes are segregated from each other with ga when gametes are formed. And lastly, alleles usually segregate independently of each other. Well, that's going to do it for this podcast. Tune in next time for the exciting world of genetics as we explore the process of meiosis. How is it similar from mitosis and how is it different? Just wait and see. Same bat time, same bat station.